Welcome to Logos Live. I'm Robert Martin, Director of the City Bible Forum in Melbourne, and I'm your host for the show. Logos is Greek for word or message, and Logos Live engages the Christian message before a live audience in the CBD of Melbourne. And do we have a live audience here today? Yes, there's a few live people out there. We also aim to have a bit of fun. Who said exploring the big questions of life shouldn't be enjoyable? Melbourne is a funny city. It hosts the annual International Comedy Festival. Funny people say funny things. But what about God? Does God share in this sense of humour? Well, this is the question that we're exploring today, and we're privileged to have a couple of comedians join us. Howard Langmead is an Anglican priest who doubles up as a stand-up comic. He's appeared in a number of Melbourne International Comedy Festival events, and he believes that the 11th commandment is, Thou shalt laugh. And he joins us now. Please welcome Howard Langmead. Thank you very much. Welcome, Howard. It's great that you can join us. It's good to see you. Our second guest is Cam Simmons. Cam is an award-winning poet and performer with numerous books and CDs of his poetry published. He makes his living through running workshops, writing books, and performing live throughout Australia. He's been a regular on Logos Live before. Please welcome Cam Simmons. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back, Cam. It's great Thank you. you can join Good us here. again. Yeah. Now, Howard, a stand-up comic and an Anglican priest. Tell us... Wait, what's your problem with that? <laughs> how does I perform every Sunday morning in the church. <laughs> Is that I how your, per- up, parish- your yeah. parishioners feel that as well, do they? Uh, yeah, that, that they stand up and walk out. No, no, I, um, <laughs> for 10 years I was part-time in a church in West Brunswick and uh, in the rest of my time was spent doing some comedy, laughter workshops, a bit of radio commentary. I had a regular spot on 774 mm. and I worked a little bit with Sunrise as a as a as a comic commentator who was vaguely religious. So yes. for 10, ye- ten years, I did that sort of stuff. Four mm. years ago, I got invited to a church that actually wanted a bit more attention and full-time ministry. Mm. So I, I'm doing that, still doing some laughter workshops, still doing a little bit of radio. So you don't cool. do so much stand-up comedy? No, anymore. no. I, so I, that's, that why, like that, that's why I put it all in my preaching. Nice. <laughs> so is it like vague and religious or vaguely religious? That's uh, this is the perspective of Channel 7. I'm vaguely religious. Actually, I, I'm wholeheartedly 100% a Jesus follower. Right. But as far as Channel 7 is concerned, I'm vaguely religious. Yeah, right. Yeah. You're not allowed to be too religious on Channel 7. Okay, right, right. <laughs> now, apparently you've trained with a coach from the Humiversity. <laughs> I oh, did. So what does training at a Humiversity mean? I paid to be trained. Well, I went there because I was doing a lot of um, comic skits, writing comic skits for church, mm. and I decided to explore... Mm comedy writing so I paid for this course and discovered that actually what they were training this group of about eight of us to do was stand up comedy we would t- and it was really good because it's called truth comedy what do you believe what's your life been like mm. what, what's the main tenant of your whole life and find ways of making that funny then stand up in a pub and try it out Wow. And so, yeah, I just turned my faith, my, the disasters of my life, my upbringing and my children into a comedy routine that said, I believe in God, you're allowed to laugh at me. Wow. Right. I like it. Okay, terrific. Now, Cam, yes. you have performed at the comedy festival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but I you have. wouldn't really consider yourself a stand-up No, no. Comedy, so comedian. basically, the way I describe myself is uh, a poet with comic stylings. <laughs> um, uh, because it's a little bit different. Like... So I love being funny, and so often sometimes people think I'm a comic or a bit, a bit of a comedian, but often funny, funny for me is often the side effect, it's not the primary effect. So I'm going, I actually really want to make people think or see things differently, and humour is a good way to do that, but I'll use a lot of other techniques as well. So, so does that mean that yeah. you, don't, you don't intend to be funny? Uh, no, sometimes I'm desperately trying to be funny, <laughs> uh, and occasionally things just, just weird things pop out, and it is funny, and I am surprised, you know, certain poems that I write, it's like, well, that was funnier than I expected, you know. And, like, because just often it's even the mood of the room. Like, the humour is so much to do with the exact vibe of what's happening. So sometimes people are just, like, vibed up. Like, when, if I do gigs at weddings, everyone's just so happy. They've already got this high joy factor. But it doesn't and work the, at funerals. Actually, yeah, that's true, I'm sure. <laughs> but, like, so at weddings, they're the best gigs because they're just laughing at everything, you know? Uh, you know, yeah, I haven't done funerals, so... Yeah, uh, I have, that yeah. would, Okay, you're right, okay. So have there been times where you've tried something that you think is supposed to be funny and it just hasn't worked? Yes, and that's when I call myself a poet. So it is. It's, it's a really good fallback because if you're a pure comedian, if you're not, you know, people aren't laughing, it's just disaster. Whereas I can just go, hey, I'm just... 
I'm just being a poet. That's right. Whatever. I'm you being know. creative. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was at a level that was different to what you were trying <laughs> yeah, to experience. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Now, you're both Christian believers, and mm. Christian material does feature in your routines. Mm. Maybe can you share just a little bit about your journey with Jesus? What convinced you to become a Christian believer? Maybe start with you, Howard. Mm. Uh, you started with my mum and dad. I was brought up in a Christian family. My mm. parents actually were missionaries. I was born in Hong Kong. Mm. Orphanage, by the way. My parents are working in the Salvation Army, running an orphanage in Hong Kong. Oh, wow. Not, mm. It actually makes good comments. It's a sad start to life. Being the only child in the orphanage that had parents. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you want to know what feeling excluded is? <laughs> <laughs> Live in, orphan- in an orphanage with your parents. <laughs> anyway, apart from uh, that sad start to my life, my parents <laughs> brought me up in the Christian faith in the Salvation Army. Mm. Uh, and really, as a sort of late teens, uh, I had a fairly big crisis of faith. Decided I really needed to check it out. Did a lot already. And thankfully, I'm uh, I became quite convinced in the person of Jesus Christ, the historicity of who Jesus was and mm. the faith as- aspect of his life. And from then I just <laughs> fired on. I believe in Jesus. Yeah. Fantastic. How about you, Ken? Yeah, I think, uh, again, I was raised in that Christian context, but yet it did come to a point where I just had to go, you know, do I take this Jesus seriously, this, this way of the Christ? which was so, I think what appealed to me early on was it was so countercultural and it was just revolutionary in this really unusual way, which I think appealed to me as an, an artist or a poet too. There's something like so deeply unusual about who Jesus is and how he operated. So there was something about that that drew me to who Jesus was and then just trying to live out love, which I think Jesus did so amazingly. So that's what I try to do. So, yeah. Great, mm. thanks. Now, now, Howard, you said you you've said that you believe in prayer, not because you're a priest, but because you do stand up comedy. Oh. <laughs> That's going to drive anybody to prayer. <laughs> so, is, so, is stand up comedy scary? Uh, yeah, but it's for me, it's in that category of so is preaching and yeah. uh, taking weddings and funerals. I, I actually, as you've noticed, I'm very shy. I'm, I'm, yeah, intro- yeah. I'm introvert by nature. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't look. Please stop looking at me. <laughs> um, yeah, and apart from my introversion, it's scary in the sense. As you were saying, Cam, mm. when you stand up, if people don't laugh, you just die on stage. Mm. Uh, if you're playing music or singing a song, a quiet audience is fine. And so with stand-up comedy, if you say something that's meant to be funny and there's no laugh or a little laugh, that's where the training comes in and the coaching. Learn to use uh, to draw the audience out, what's called saving lines or mm. audience put-down lines or self-put down, something that makes people that gets you can't go onto your routine and let them not laugh. Mm. So yeah, the right. scariness is saying my role is to make you laugh at me. Uh, and it's, it's also, it's quite addictive. There's a good adrenaline rush. Yeah. And the, f- the problem was the first time I got up in a pub, tried out my little 10 minutes of routine, people laughed and I was sucked in. Yeah. Oh, uh, wow. I, like lo- I loved like it. Drug. It was so much better than preaching. So much more. I got so much more <laughs> response in the pub than I did in the church. Yeah. That their eyes were sparking. They were laughing. They were drunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And they were dr- the drunker they were, the better I sounded. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, 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 I actually liked getting out. I'd been, I'd been ordained many years. And actually getting out of the church into a setting where there were people who didn't know God and I could be me, I actually found that there's something exciting in that for me. I really enjoyed yeah, it. Nice. So is that why you, do you preach after communion at church? Yeah. When, when after they've had, everyone's had a bit of wine. Yeah, yeah. And oh, everyone's it's, it's a, bit so more, a bit looser. As you would know, the normal Anglican procedure is preach and then communion. But in our church, we do it the other way around. Right. Okay, we, have, yeah. we have communion with plenty of good, strong yeah, port. So have, I got yeah, rid of the wine right. and we have port now. Yeah, that's <laughs> and, right. And, Only fortified. And then yeah. I preach. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, you have communion three or four times. Is that right? Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> I do. I'm not sure about the congregation. Okay, right. Sorry. Sorry. So here we're at a forum about comedy and jokes. What's your favourite joke? Do you have a joke that you tell? Well, I don't do straight up jokes. I just do weird little observations. That's often what a good poem is. Here's here's something, I don't know, you might laugh at it. It's just a little thing, I don't know. So this is, we're going to test. Okay, all right. I I promise to laugh. It's pretty short, okay? (laughs) Okay, This is just my little thing, okay. Mm, Okay. In difficult circumstances, did Jesus ask himself the question, what would I do? Thanks for that. Yeah, yeah. So no uh, one laughs better at a joke than a comedian. Okay. <laughs> for sure. for, for me, that's like that's what I like. I just go, hey, oh, yeah, you think about something differently, yeah. and it's funny because I've done that in a lot of different audiences. Sometimes they just kill themselves laughing, and others they go, hmm, interesting mm. philosophical concept. Yeah. You know, yeah. like you know, like it's it's totally different. So yeah. how about you? How, yeah, how, what, my, what, tell us a joke. Come yeah. on. Oh, I, I hate that question. Oh, yeah. My stand-up comedy is is routine. It's narrative. It's about myself. 
my favourite topic. <laughs> it's either, either about me or God, take your pick. And often about my children. For three years of my life, I was a single parent. I had three kids on my own. That was part of the tragedy and drama of my life that mm. led me to stand up. So I talk a lot in pubs about men alone with kids. Mm. Uh, and one of the lines I like, you, you'll laugh, won't you? I'll, I'll try. I'll really try. <laughs> oh, that hurts. <laughs> try. I'll, yeah. I'll work it up. Yeah. So, um, and yeah, one of, a lot of just one line is throwing. One of my lines is, I never knew what true contentment was until I had children. Then it was too late. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, ni- nice is not oh, a good sorry, response. Okay, nice. Laughter. And laughter. All right, that sorry. was funny. Nice is I not work. I was feeling too much pressure to laugh. Sorry so, about that. Know, <laughs> It wasn't even the right moment to laugh. No, I know. I'm laughing at the wrong time now. Okay, now we do try to have a bit of fun here on Logos Live. It's not a sin to laugh as far as I'm aware, or is it a sin to laugh? Better not be or I'm in trouble. (laughs) No, it's not. Oh, good. Okay, good. Now, so as comedians or perhaps poets, um, I thought I'd test your knowledge with a short quiz. Oh. On how well do you know comedy movies? Uh-huh. I don't know. Well, we'll find out. Yes, that's right. <laughs> that's why it's a quiz. That's right. So, okay, which film, according to the box office mojo, is the highest grossing comedy film of all time? A, this Despicable Me 2. All right. B, Shrek 2. C, Home Alone 2. Or D, Sister Act 2. What? Now, someone said that we have to what be concerned choice. about any movie starting with uh, number two in the title. I'm going to go Sister Act 2. I'm going to go Old could okay. be one of the newer yeah. ones. Yeah, I, I have no idea, but just to be different, I'm going to go for Shrek. Okay. Just because animated movies do so they well at the box office. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's see. Well, yeah. the answer actually is Shrek 2. So congratulations, oh, Howard. Um, but the question no is, is Shrek 2 really a comedy? Because yeah. some have thought it's a true story. I mean, not very many people, perhaps. But <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> and so I suppose it depends a little bit on what you make of what you, what you think is a comedy, doesn't it? Like yeah. Some might have thought that Titanic was a bit of a joke. Uh, Star Wars, <laughs> The Phantom <laughs> Menace. Batman yes. featured the Joker. So what exactly is a comedy? Um, a film may have comedic elements, but it doesn't necessarily make it a comedy. Yeah, see, I don't know. For me, it's about, like, wh- what your primary goal is, you know. So if your primary goal is to make people laugh, that's pure, that's comedy. Mm. Whereas, uh, you know, some of these things, yeah, so even... Like, like half of those, I'd sort of say they're actually more like, uh, you know, maybe tragedy comedies or, you know, I think kids movies. I don't know, kids movies that happen to be funny. Like, I don't think of them as pure comedies. I think, you know, going old school, Flying High, like, uh, that's, a, that's a comedy. Like, that, <laughs> it's just going straight for laughs. That's all it's trying yeah, to do. It's not yeah. trying to tell some grand story. It's going for laughs. I'm glad you said the primary purpose because comedy, the primary purpose is to make people laugh. So mm. there are gags in it and there are, yeah. there are definitions of what a gag is. Something that's surprising, something that's unexpected, mm. something that's slapstick. But it's only the primary because often yeah. it's quite possible to have more than one goal. And I'm just yeah. saying that as a comedian, yeah, yeah. I, I like truth comedy. There's people who tell their life stories. Yeah. So you get you know, the Vietnamese refugee who stands yeah. up and does comedy. And, and you listen to them and you've seen something. I don't know if you know Sue Ann yeah. Post. Mm. She's a comedian. Mm. This is odd. I really admire her because she's a lesbian. She's an ex-Mormon. She's been sexually abused. I get all of this from a comedy. And what I like about her is... As I'm listening, I get an in, we're laughing, but I thought I've learned about her and I thought that's what yeah. I want to be. I want to yeah. tell people about my life, my yeah. ministry in the church, my children, what I believe. I want them laughing. Yeah, yeah. At the end, I want them to think, actually, mm. I've got an insight into that guy and what makes him tick. Yeah. So the primary purpose is to make people laugh. Comedy is incredibly self-revelationary. Mm. 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 So what then makes something funny? Well, I mean, I would say usually it, it's, it's got to have an element of surprise. You know, usually there's an expectation and the expectation is subverted. I think that's usually where comedy happens. And so that can be done, you know, with slapstick, you know, so really physical stuff. But then it's the same thing with really witty cognitive stuff. It's an expectation is set up and in, it, through some weird way it doesn't get met and you are surprised. Yep. So it's so surprise. Surprise, then, surprise and, and, and the unexpected. So like mm. a lot of the uh, Seinfeld humour, it just puts two things next to each other that you don't expect to be next to each other and it yeah. makes people laugh. So, yeah. so it's li- like linking the, concepts. Like the joke, what's the problem with Irish jokes, the timing? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. nice. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Sorry, I should have laughed. No, I, was, <laughs> nice. I was being poetic at that particular <laughs> yeah, moment. That's yeah. right, yeah. I was being poetic, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. second question in our quiz. What is the highest grossing God comedy film from 1978 to the present. Now, God comedy films are supernatural comedies with religious elements. So was it A, Bruce Almighty? Oh, right. B, Evan Almighty? Oh. C, Monty Python's The Life of Brian? Wow. Or D, Justin Bieber's Belief, a backstage and onstage look at Justin Bieber during his <laughs> rise to superstardom? I really nah. hope it's not that. Nah. <laughs> anyway. I'm going to go for Life of Brian. Go I'll, for... I'll, just say, um, I'll just say Evan Almighty, just something different. Yeah. Okay, well... 
Uh, do you want to try something else? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what about Brussel money? Brussel money, oh, yeah! Oh, congratulations, oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. Good. Yeah. 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 Good. Now, but The Life of Brian, though, has been named the greatest comedy film of all time by Total Film Magazine and The Guardian newspaper. Wow. Yeah, when it was released, it was accused of being blasphemous and there were calls for it to be banned. Yeah. Do you think The Life of Brian was a blasphemous? Oh, you, you can answer first. Uh, I'd, I'd like to hear your It really divided the Christian community. I yeah. love the life of Brian because <laughs> yeah. I think it's about Brian, <laughs> yeah. not about Jesus. Uh, and I reckon it's, it's rather being a parody of Jesus. It's a comedy around the actions of Jesus with this bizarre observer. And for me, it raises mm. all the questions of who is Jesus? What was he on about? And it does it in such a hilarious way. And I personally didn't find that offensive. The first time I saw it, I mm. was just rolling on the floor laughing. Yeah. And my <laughs> hope and suspicion is Jesus was with me. <laughs> yeah. uh, because I, I, didn't, I didn't see Brian as a parody of Jesus, but Brian is an observer. And I thought yeah. in the first century or the 21st century, that there are so many obser observers like Brian who just get a bit wrong, who, un who misunderstand. Yeah. I thought it was hilarious. But I, I mean, I do see it as a parody, but not so much on Jesus, but uh, potentially on the institutional church mm. and church and religiousness, you know. Mm. So I do see it as a parody on that. And so... If you are very precious of your in church as an institution, I can see why people are frustrated with that. But certainly, that's that's not what my faith is about, you know. Yeah. Like so. Now I know a number of people who have said, "I know God has a sense of humour; otherwise, He wouldn't have created me." Now the only problem with that is the people who say that generally aren't very funny. Oh. <laughs> so, I've never said that of you. No, that's good. Uh, that's good. Is humour something that God created? I believe so. Um, yeah. Like all good gifts, it can be misused. Any, any, but sure. I see it as a creative art form in terms of yeah. uh, a comedic way of thinking is actually putting a different spotlight on something, creating an unexpected ending, making links that no one else makes. Mm. It's another way of looking at a situation. Mm. Uh, and so like writing music or poetry or yeah. painting a picture, all of those art forms can be abused atrociously. Yeah. Or they can... They can be done to make people think. And yeah. well-done comedy makes people reflect on life from a different aspect. Yeah, that's right. And, and all creativity comes from God. Mm. Well, as part of Logos Live, we do reflect, and we reflect on the Scriptures, the Logos. And we're going to explore more about humour and laughing in a section of the Old Testament, a psalm. Now, yeah. psalms are songs and in many ways poems. So, yeah. Cam, is a performance poem. Maybe, do you mind reading it out for us? All right. The, the okay. Psalm so 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like the streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy carrying sheaves with them. Mm. Mm. Now, this passage talks about people laughing, yeah. but it's not necessarily laughing from telling jokes. Yeah. What, what do you make of it? Uh, it's laughing from joy, yeah. and it's because of what God has done gives us great joy. And joy, I think, isn't always expressed in laughter, but if you never laugh, I don't think you're joyful. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, laughter is one expression of joy. And yeah. here, what I love about this is... Um, then it was said among the nations, when we laugh and praise God, then the nation says, the Lord has done great things for me. Mm. This actually was the passage of scripture I had read at my induction service at wow. St Paul's in Caulfield North, wow. just to warn them of who was coming. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, but that sense, it's our joy and laughter makes the nations, those who don't know God as we know God, yeah. say, wow, God's done something for them. Listen to them laugh. And yeah. I love that passage. Beautiful. I can tell you a little bit of research. A guy called Provine. Sure. I've done a little research into laughter. And yeah. this is very sad for stand-up comedians because he says that only 10 to 20 percent of laughter follows a punchline uh, yeah. that most laughter comes from social interaction or playfulness yeah and and i think it's that playfulness and the joyfulness people laugh from joy you, yeah. you don't wait for a punchline to laugh if you listen to laughter at a dinner party or after church people are just interacting in a joyful happy way so is there a difference then to laugh because of joy as opposed to a joke no, the laughter is the same because a joke gives you a sudden burst of joy, of, of happiness, of surprise, of excitement. Yeah. So you, you get the unexpected ending, you smile, and if you're really a joyful person, it comes out as a laugh. 
And the thing I was thinking about laughter too is that um, you, as soon as you start observing yourself or observing yourself laughing, you can't laugh anymore. Mm. So there's something about laughing is completely in the moment. Spontaneous. Yeah, but it, and also because you can't even remember why you're laughing sometimes. It, there's this weird thing about laughing is actually being right in that moment. You're not in the past, you're not in the future, you're just there. So, so mm. is there a sense then that there's this spontaneousness in this passage mm. that we're looking at? Yeah, oh, there is. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I, I suppose I see laughter as that physical expression of joy. So joy is that deep contentment, you know, and sometimes it will physically manifest, you know, through laughter. But at its core, this joy is like just for me, it's that deep contentment, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um, deep contentment, I often mm. associate with peace. I want to separate peace and joy because people yeah. use that as an excuse not to laugh out loud. Yeah, uh, right. And love, joy and peace are such strong Christian words mm. and we focus so much on peace and love. And actually joy and express joy should be part of the Christian faith. Yeah, there nice. actually should be a lot more smiling and I suspect a bit more <laughs> chuckling and laughing in church. The best compliment I've had this week, Sunday morning when I was preaching, a three-year-old child at the front in a pause that I had said, he's funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it made my day. <laughs> The whole church just broke up. (laughs) So how then can God provide joy? It says here he restores the fortunes of Zion, which I take to mean that is the fortunes of Zion. That which God promised, he's now restored to us. That which we thought was taken away is given back. As Christians, that's our salvation, our redemption. Mm. That what God does for us in Jesus should make us smile. In fact, we should look at Jesus and have a chuckle. Uh, Easter should bring us joy. The resurrection of Jesus should just make you chuckle. Yeah. Well, at least smile. <laughs> well, it's about, for me, it's about restoring, you know, so it's restoring some sort of wholeness, restoring completeness and things like that. So that's what brings joy uh, for me. So. Can, I, can I tell you, back in the Middle Age, Greek Orthodox churches, Middle Ages, on Easter Monday, the men, apologies, women, a very patriarchal group they are, uh, the men would gather back in the church and they would tell funny anecdotes and stories and laugh, sort of attention release after Easter. And their excuse was they're laughing at the joke that God played on Satan because they see in the resurrection wow. and, and when you analyse the resurrection it's got all the elements of humour it was unexpected by most people yeah. there was an element of surprise uh, the element of surprise the un- and it brought incredible joy to people yeah. uh, and so the Greek Orthodox saw that as something you laugh at God played this great joke on Satan who thought he'd won on Good Friday and the joy the surprise uh, of resurrection you should just be laughing about it wow beautiful so is there a sense, though, that uh, comedic humour is not necessarily sinful but just trivial, uh, searching for that great hedonistic laughter high? Well, I, I wouldn't quite go there. I know how it's even a concept. <laughs> trivial! <laughs> Ten years I was doing trivial stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's probably right. <laughs> well, I see, I see it as, like, like I was saying before, I actually see it as a really important um, release valve and things like that. So I actually think it's a really healthy part of being a full human. Yeah. So, so, so I think it's Im- important as for the, the wholeness of ourselves. Laughter is healthy. Not all laughter is from comedy. Laughter is healthy. Mm. All these studies now in terms of what it does for the um, releasing endorphins yeah, the and endorphins building the immune systems, like blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah. I can give you yeah. a whole laughter workshop on why you should laugh. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's a healthy exercise to laugh. Laughing for comedy, I wouldn't call it trivia any more than I would any art any other art form many comedians not all yeah. many of them are quite intelligent it's a quirky way of seeing the world yeah. it's an art form like writing a song or poetry yeah, yeah, or painting yeah. and it can it can any art form can be trivial any yeah. art form can be really lowest comedy not the reason so many comedians in the comedy festival use sex jokes bad humor taboo subjects is you, if you raise tension, you get a bigger laugh. And so they go to this bottom line where they get bigger laughs. But in actual fact, the ability to play with concepts, to mm. match words, mm. uh, to have sudden twists, it's quite a creative art. It's not trivial. <laughs> but also, I mean, I must say, I suppose it's often the difference between a good comedian and a, oh, you know, a bad comedian and a good comedian. When, when I've been or, to or sort of... Bad comedian and a poet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. I call it spoken Thanks. word. Thanks that. That's right. Um, is that when I've been to comedy nights uh, and I've come away feeling like I've had a dinner of fairy floss. It sli- makes you slightly sick and it just doesn't fill you up. You know, it was sort of nice having it, but then it leaves you empty. But then I have been to comedians, those really good shows where it was a proper dinner, you know, but with a really good dessert or maybe maple syrup all over everything or something. I don't know. I don't know what the metaphor is, but like, but it 
it was both deeply fulfilling, like you were saying, you're hearing someone's story or really learning something, as well as being incredibly funny. And, you know, that's just, that's the good form of the art. So Is humour escapist? I, th- I think it can be, um, but it, not necessarily, you know. I it's think like it, any craft or skill or creative activity. It can be used as an escape yeah. or it can be used as a form of expression of life. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So, Cam mm. and Howard, today we've been thinking about humour. Mm. Does God have a sense of humour? I think so. Um, Jesus certainly had a sense of humour and he fully represents the nature of God. So uh, some, there are some passages in the New Testament in the Gospels you should read with a smile on your face and it makes a difference. My favourite bit mm. is his street. You know that bit where he's got to pay a tax, he sends Peter off to get a fish and it opens a fish's mouth and the coin's in the... You know that bit? And you, yeah. Yeah, that bit. Uh, that, it's street theory. You just, uh, it almost is like Jesus goes, da da Yeah. I mean, I don't think there could be anyone around there the who original. doesn't at least <laughs> smile. The original street theatre. I mean, he doesn't just get a coin from from somewhere like Jesus could have. He wow. sends for a fish, opens the mouth and pulls it out. It's, wow. it's, it's hilarious. It's yeah. just, it's performance art. But I suppose uh, the way I see God, I, look, I'm not sure about pure sense of humour uh, because, uh, you know, after, you know, they talk about uh, humour being so much to do with timing. Uh, and so if, if God is outside time, how does he, uh, you know, get surprised by things? You know, anyway, that's a very anthropomorphic oh, well, concept that's, of that's God. Deep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. yeah, that's... But I know, I'm sure that God delights in. You know, like I see my little kids and they are joking, right? And they're having an incredible laugh. And I don't laugh at their exact funny joke, but I just laugh at them laughing. I delight in them. So so it's a delight. I'm sure that God completely delights in our joy. In a playful. I think yeah, God's playful. That's right. Uh, playful in the sense of playing with children, which we are to God very much <laughs> his children. God, God yeah. delights in assisting us, playing with us, mm. chuckling with us, laughing with us. One of the pictures I have in the entrance of my house is one, an image of a laughing Jesus and so mm. many pictures of Jesus are so solemn I've just got this laughing Jesus because yeah, uh, nice. that's my concept of who Jesus was, a fully human person who enjoyed a good laugh, who enjoyed being playful mm. and could, could get people in with humour and with a smile and with good conversational laugh mm. and laughter is also in the passage that we've looked at today, yes. God's people absolutely laugh, they yeah, laugh. Yeah, yeah. And, and as Christians and New Testament believers when we read the Old Testament about God restoring the fortunes of Zion, coming to, back to the promised land. We use those as images of heaven. So my understanding from Psalm 126 is in heaven, it's just going to be laughter. When, when the Lord restores our fortunes, our mouths will be filled with laughter. We should yeah. start practicing. Yeah, nice. <laughs> well, let me leave you with the Logos for the day. Psalm 126. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. The Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. I look forward to you joining us next time for Logos Live. Please thank our guests today, Howard Langmead and Cam Sanders.